Any of us MMORPG players out there can probably still remember their least favorite quest types. Whether that be the ones where you have to kill mobs and collect an item with an extremely low drop rate, many times in one's own, or escort an NPC from point A to point B where that NPC walks faster than your character can walk, but slower than your character can run, so you can't just click auto run and change directions every once in a while. Well, those days are hopefully coming to an end soon when you step foot into the world of Vera as Ashes of Creation has a plan to reinvent one of the most boring, repetitive features an MMORPG has to offer, in some people's opinions. Some people like questing, but I think the majority of people just want to rush to endgame to do raids and all that fun stuff. There are, in my mind, three categories of questing. You have the generic, kill this, gather that, and find this lost thing. Then there is the more world-altering ones, such as World of Warcraft has with its phasing, which can change up how the world is when the quest is complete for just your character, hiding everyone else in that zone who is not on the same zone progress as you, which is kind of a terrible way to do it, because part of an MMO is to socialize and see other players and what they're doing. Or there are dynamic events such as Guild Wars 2 has, which are triggered by players interacting and exploring the world. These events have multiple outcomes, but once triggered, they don't actually require any player input for them to progress forward. So it really gives you not a lot of good feeling of failure or success. And the events don't really offer any large scale, long term permanent changes, as the majority of these events can be repeatable. But back in 2012, there wasn't actually the technology to make these on a much larger scale either, so when Guild Wars 2 launched, this was probably peak technology. Now imagine a world where all three of these quest types were combined into one. Let's say you take the exploration from your generic questing NPCs and that interaction you have with NPCs that has you hunting down and killing and gathering species. You take the permanent world change based off your progression, but expanded to that server-wide basis and not on an individual basis, and get rid of the locking people behind phasing, and then you take the world reacting to players and progressing into new stories but tie that into the fact that player choice does actually have a large effect on the outcome of the event, and these outcomes could be permanent. And if the server decides to do nothing about it, well then the event could potentially be failed and not progress forward anymore, locking out whatever content may be revealed beyond this point. This is exactly what Intrepid is doing for Ashes of Creation, with what they are calling story arcs. While these arcs are quite similar to Guild Wars 2 dynamic events, Intrepid seems to be upping the scale of these in a huge way, and creating some much more permanent outcomes depending on the situation. These story arcs are essentially the evolution and the next phase in Guild Wars 2's dynamic events. These story arcs will have much more impact on the individual server and be written within the server's history books, which is an actual thing actually. Players can view in-game to see what exactly happened on the server's life. So if you're starting out two years after Ashes of Creation's launch, you can see what made this server and what makes it unique. Story arcs have multiple ways to be unlocked. This could happen through cultural activity, regional activity or node progression. Essentially, the world reacts to the players, this creates the nodes, the dungeons, the quests, the raids, and the events. It really creates everything. Everything is built off player interaction with the world. And then these story arcs are a reaction to these changes within the world, bringing in even more opportunity to change the story of the server. Story arcs are like a tree, so to speak. The roots of the tree are the players, all on their different paths doing their different things that eventually come together and progress into the base of the tree, which would be the start of the story arc. As the players continue to adventure on these quests, there are actions that will impact which way the arc goes. It could branch out this way or that, changing the outcome of these arcs and the overall story that the server experiences. Not all story arcs are gonna have the same ending, and the outcome could turn out vastly different than what another server experiences experiences, really giving that server and your character their own unique story. When a story arc comes online, it also changes up the environment, where the monsters can be updated, new quest hubs could spawn, new NPCs could pop up, and new pathways can open up, giving you access to previously restricted areas. We have seen these types of events happening in-game twice now. The first was the more major of the two, with the Tower of Carfin, where an explosion at the top of the tower triggered the story arc called the Blood Still Dew, that changed the spawn tables of the area from elemental armor 
armor to these cultist guys and changed the entire ambience of the environment. It also moved some bridges around to create new pathways that were not available before. We also saw another story arc in the updated cleric showcase as an area of ruins once populated by bandits had been overrun with minotaurs and players needed to set out and help the bandits push back the minotaurs by encouraging a wave of zombies to come in, which seems a bit odd, but this is probably just one of the many outcomes a player can have. Obviously, story arcs weren't the focus on this stream, so we didn't really see the progress to get to this point, but it is still another story arc happening within the world. There are really two different types of these story arcs as well, repeatable ones and one-off story arcs. The majority of them will be repeatable based on certain conditions. That condition could be extensive as a node needing to be destroyed and rebuilt down the road, or just waiting on a cooldown. But then there are the ones that are not repeatable, and these are the major story arcs that are happening on the server. If you miss one of these, well, the chances are that you may want to find a server that has not had this event in their history, or else you're going to miss out on whatever cool progressive story beat just happened. When a story arc pops up, players can progress through each chapter by completing story arc quests within the time frame that each chapter is active for. These arcs can last for days, so it really reduces the pressure of feeling the need to log on every day so you don't miss something. And if you complete all the quests within that given time, then you'll have to wait for the next phase of the story arc to continue. The next phase will really depend on where players put their effort. It sounds that these things will be very heavily influenced on guilds or large groups of players because the majority of players can focus on a certain direction to influence the overall story. But you need to be careful because it is possible for players to fail a storyline. When it comes to what you get out of these story arcs, well, other than shaping up the server to go in a certain direction, there are individual rewards as well, which will be balanced over multiple story arc branches to avoid a meta where certain branches provide better loot, and they will not be best in slot rewards. It seems these are to mostly replace your generic questing rewards, as that high-end best in slot gear will still come from crafting and raids, and end game progression. Overall, story arcs are really taking what Guild Wars 2 did best with questing and progressing it even further to make Ashes of Creation great, because the scale of this is going to be absolutely massive and nothing like any of us have ever seen in an MMORPG. Are you excited to embark on story arcs in Alpha 2 and beyond? Drop a comment down below and make sure you click that subscribe button and turn on that bell for notifications so you never miss an Ashes of Creation update. If you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in on the forums, buy some cosmetics, or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of Vera. But otherwise, be sure to stay tuned for a lot more to come.